Then I do every Friday. Uh, be sure to tip your waitress and try the javelina. Uh, Ten minutes past nine o'clock, 56 degrees. This morning with the movie guys uh, talking about everything that's playing at the Sawmill Theaters. Uh, first, we want to plug, first and foremost, uh, the uh, Classic Movie Saturday, which is the, uh, uh, the first Saturday of the month, which, by the way, is tomorrow. And uh, North by Northwest, the Alfred Hitchcock uh, thriller about a helpless New York City ad executive mistaken for a government agent by a group of foreign spies. Now, you can get in and see this on the big screen tomorrow uh, for just five bucks. It gets underway at 10 o'clock in the morning. And, and uh, you know, Dina, as we've always been saying here, one of the really cool things is to be able to, uh, I mean, see these classic movies on the big screen again. It's just so much so much of a, a, a different experience than just watching it on your TV, on a DVD at home, and that kind of thing. It is, and so many people are interested in this. I've been, you know, announcing it to my yoga classes, my English classes. I stand on street corners and wave my arms around. I mean, North by Northwest is a really great suspense movie. And the question, I, I downloaded a bunch of stuff, you know, what is the twist in this movie? <laughs> this is the quote. The twist, North by Northwest, has more twist turns and switchbacks than a mountainous road in the Idaho sawtooth. It's That's a good There's all kinds of, this happens and you think this is going to be what that means, and then whoop, I mean, yeah. And Hitchcock, Harry, Hitchcock was pretty good at, at uh, really? making you look left when things were going on to the right. Yes, yes, and, and Cary Grant, I mean, seeing Cary Grant on the big screen, it, you know, just by itself is an experience. Um, that he, he was such a, an iconic star, mm -hmm. and Eva Marie Saint, and then James Mason, you know, he, who plays the baddest of bad guys, not like Clancy Brown and Highland, Highlander, mind you, that's a different kind of bad guy. James Mason is this urbane, you know, he almost hisses his lines, he's mm -hmm. very soft-spoken, and he's scary. Interesting, interesting. Yeah. So again, this plays at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning, uh, and you know, one of our other critics here, of course, uh, uh, is Andy. And Andy, uh, uh, what's your, I mean, what do you think about this movie? You've obviously probably seen this before. Sure, yeah, yeah, a few times. Uh, overall opinion? Oh yeah, no, this is a terrific movie, yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, there's, some, there's some really good, because it's Hitchcock, and uh, there's some really good movie moments in the movie, mm -hmm. oddly enough. <laughs> it's always good to have movie moments in a movie. Well, one of the characters is um, Mount Rushmore. There's, a, uh, there's actually a chase down Mount Rushmore. I mean, I don't want to yeah. do a spoiler. Mount Rushmore Rushmore. didn't have a speaking part in this, but, but no. But you know what's really interesting? I did some, you know, some some reading about this, and they they established the shot of Mount Rushmore by filming actually Mount Rushmore. Hmm. But then they built a set, and this is the the old days when. They would build these huge sets so that they could control what was happening. And so they built a Mount Rushmore set wow. for the close-ups uh, with uh, Cary Grant and Eva Marie Saint. Really good. Very interesting. Really good stuff. Wow. So, so you know, how awkward would that be? To, in a case of mistaken identity, you have uh, foreign spies chasing you around trying to kill you. Yeah, and of course, I think the, the one you know really iconic. Uh, a scene from the movie that um, I think we've all seen uh, a gazillion times is uh, this biplane uh, coming down to look like do a strafing run on uh, Gregory Peck who's uh, running Carrie away. Grant. Oh, uh, Carrie Grant, excuse me. Yes, through a field. It's a yeah. crop duster. I mean, it's it's really good. And then the other thing we need to always look for in Alfred Hitchcock movies, Alfred Hitchcock always does a cameo appearance. And so it's very it would be very easy to miss this, but it's right at the end of the credits you will see Alfred Hitchcock trying to uh, get into a bus and the bus slams in his face, the bus door slams in his face. So have a, have a look for Alfred Hitchcock and he's kind of unmistakable if you know what you're looking for. Mr. Rotund. Yeah, he's yes. uh, a couple of one-liners came to mind that just wouldn't be right, so I'm going to go on. <laughs> um, also uh, playing at the Sawmill Theater, uh, now I've been hearing a, a number of interesting reviews on the movie Shazam. This is a movie about uh, Billy Baston, a, a streetwise 14-year-old who can magically transform into the adult, super, uh, the adult superhero Shazam. This plays at 1, 4, and 7. The 4 o'clock showing is in 3D. It's rated PG-13. I've been hearing some good things about this one, Chris. This one got great reviews. Yeah, yeah really good reviews. <coughs> Have you had a chance to see um, this yourself? You know, we played it last night. We did an advanced screenings. Right. Um, I didn't watch the whole thing. I got to watch 30, 40 minutes of it. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Looks really good. Now I remember, you know, as a kid, uh, Shazam cartoons 
uh, had you know some guy that looked like he you know just climbed out of a genie's bottle, um, and it was you know it was all cartoons. But this is all live action. Yes, this is. And, and uh, that, what do you think of the special effects in the parts that you saw? Uh, it's been great. Yeah, and it, it's um, uh, what it's been compared to is remember Tom Hanks in uh, Big. Right. Right. Big versus uh, uh, mixed in with a comic book movie with a, a superhero movie. Wow, it's, it's this 15-year-old kid who, who gains all these superpowers, and uh, there's a lot of humor in it. You know, and on, on, you know, a 15-year-old who's like Superman now, and, and how he deals with that, and uh, you know, then also grows into it. Well, and conversely, the the movie that you referred or compared it to, Big, with Tom Hanks. I would, you know, I just I hadn't thought about that movie in a while, but there's a couple of scenes from that movie that just are gut bustingly funny. Uh, the, the morning that he first wakes up as an adult after going to bed as a kid, and you, if you saw the movie, you know what I'm talking about. If you don't, I ain't going to explain it. Um, but uh, but yeah, you know, and there was there was just a, a number of things. Uh, is that the one also where they were? Uh, uh, he and the toy manufacturer are playing the piano on that, uh, yes. was it Macy's or something yeah, like yeah, that the, back in New York? Uh, yeah, dancing on the piano. Yeah. The, the yeah. Giant, yes. yeah, that, uh, that was a great movie. I forgot all about that. And I believe it has the great Daryl Hannah. Oh. She was she was some in her day. She was great. Yeah. yeah. yeah Tom, Tom Hanks started as a comedian. Yes. You know, he definitely grew into a, you know, more of these dramatic roles for sure, but uh, when we saw Bachelor Party, right. what was uh, you know, an R-rated comedy, one of his first movies. Mm -hmm. And and he can I think he can play just about any part. I mean, when you look at uh, what was it? Uh, uh, what was the cast? Castaway. Castaway. Yes, yes. I mean, you know, you go about, what an hour into it's the movie before him. there's anybody yeah. talking or something. Yeah, that was weird. Volleyball. Yeah. yeah but about. Wilson. <laughs> um, Wilson. But, uh, Wilson. And then you go from something like that to uh, uh, Forrest Gump, where. You know, that was, uh, there was a lot of really, I mean, there's some humor in the movie, but I mean, it, it had some great messages oh, to it. Save, saving Private Ryan. And that oh, was, oh yeah, yeah, no, that was yeah, a fantastic did. movie. Complete, yeah, in the Green Mile. Turns there, yeah. Oh, oh, the Green oh, Mile. Oh, man, that, oh, uh, man, yeah. I, I, that, I, I will always watch that every time I see it yeah. on TV. I, I like that one a lot. I'm not a big fan of electric chairs, but, but that's a great movie. Um, another story for another time, perhaps. Um, but, uh, but, but Shazam! Uh, <laughs> Shazam. <laughs> you know, it, it is a PG-13 on that. Um, mm -hmm. There's there's some images that are, uh, you know, there's some monsters in there, I guess. So, oh, so they're, they're real so, little so, ones that kind of freak Yeah, out. you might want to kind of watch that, but uh, it, it's a, a pretty mild PG-13, though. Well, now, speaking of movies that'll freak you right out, um, now, they've done a, a sequel to Pet Cemetery. And uh, uh, after the Creed family's cat is killed by a truck, Dad resorts to burying it in a mysterious pet cemetery, which is definitely not as it seems. Now, I saw the first pet cemetery, and I have to say, that was a pretty dark, twisted movie. I mean, I, I enjoyed it, and I'm not, I'm not a big fan of horror movies, but that was a pretty interesting movie. Uh, you know, what I, I do we you know about this one? I, I watched it yesterday morning. Uh, this thing is creepy. It is, it is it really good. watched it in the morning? Good. That's a weird <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and, and great reviews. Yeah. Uh, you walk around the rest of the day saying, like boo to everybody. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> just, just a dark, dark film. Wow. Uh, uh, you know, we talked a little bit earlier, you know, Stephen King, um, yeah. he, he's got something bounce around there in his head. He's got some dark images going well, we, on. We were, a bunch of us were talking out in the lobby here just before the show today, too, about can you imagine having Stephen King like, hey, can you come stay at my house for the weekend? I'd like to get to know you better. And something tells me you can't keep writing all of that kind of stuff that he writes without there being some pretty dark he, edges to yeah, your life. We said he, he drags these kind of childhood fears. Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, these, these are horror movies, but then he drags his childhood stuff into it and and ties those together, and it, it just becomes a a, a tragedy. I mean, when I was watching Pet Cemetery yesterday, kind of these what was it Oedipus, you know, where he gouges his own eyeballs out. You know, you're just this mm -hmm. this this sorrow and just these these terrible stories. Um, Yikes. this is a this is a great horror film, and it is. But by the way, definitely rated R. So if you yeah. haven't seen any movies that include someone gouging their eyes out this week, this is it. <laughs> well, that's not, I mean, uh, the first one though, and again, I'm not a big fan of horror movies, but I have to say, I was. Uh, I found that to be entertaining. I mean, it was you were waiting to see, you know, what comes wow. next, uh, and that, that it was pretty suspenseful that way. So you know, John Lithgow's in this one. Uh, right. plays, plays a great role. Mm -hmm. uh, Andy Cohen. This is, this is a zombie movie. Well, uh, technically, it is a zombie yeah. movie because <laughs> you know, the, the, the kitty cat is dead, right. uh, and then they bring the kitty cat back alive, which is uh, you know what a zombie is: is a dead guy that's alive or a dead. In this case, a dead kitty cat. Yeah, if I remember correctly, it's a cat ain't happy anymore. 
Yeah. No. <laughs> Boy, I have, I have to go along with uh, what Craig says. Uh, Stephen King taps into some something primal uh, within us, and I've been going I mentioned going back to the, our childhood fears, and he he does that better than anybody, and it just scares the pajamas off me. Wow. It's uh, uh, I'm, and no, I'm not going to be going to see this. I'm going to go see Sir Sam. Certainly, if you do, uh, if you do, <laughs> hopefully you don't go in your pajamas. Uh, um, the, uh, well, this is, you know, this is this is rib country, and we're very <coughs> casual up here. Yes. <laughs> well, Pet Cemetery is rated R. It plays at 1:30, 4:30, and 7:30. Is this just starting today? Yes. All right. And what do we know? I mean, what have the critics said about this so far? Oh, well, critics love it. <coughs> like I said, but both these films that we got coming in today have gotten great reviews. Uh, kind of, kind of rare for a uh, for a horror film. Hmm. But but this one has done really well, and it is. Uh, I'm trying to really remember how many horror films there have been that I heard had great reviews from the critics. You know, it doesn't happen a whole lot. Yeah. It doesn't happen a whole lot, you know. And, uh, Unless, of course, you're talking about a gross of zombies. <laughs> now, now plus one. Um, <laughs> you know, I looked that up today. Uh, Stephen King, 350 million books he has sold. Wow! Whoa! Oh, 350 yeah. million. 350 million hey. copies of his books been sold. Yeah. I'm not trying so to he, figure out how to pay the rent this week. No, no. no he's, he's definitely got um, you know, he's definitely got something going on there. And like, like Andy said, it is. He's very dark, and he, he does. He taps into something kind of. Kind of prime one is. What do we what do we know about Andy? Uh, the the amount of money spent on this. Do we have numbers on that yet? On Pet Cemetery? I mean, are these expensive movies to make? Usually, I mean, a lot of the horror movies I've seen have been pretty low budget. Uh, and this one is in, in that tradition. Huh. Uh, Twenty one million dollars, which for, is low money by Hollywood standards. Yeah, yeah. certainly not uh, by mine. But. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'd split that with him. We'd both be happy. Oh, uh, yeah. We'd split it, we'd split it with everybody in the building and be happy. Yeah, yeah. And if, if I could just speak for a minute to the uh, Stephen King as an author. You know, we talk about uh, uh, how, how scary his stuff is and how he really taps into that. But he is also a consummate wordsmith. Oh, is that the first one we've lost this morning? I think so. <laughs> sorry, we're playing with the phone here, sorry. If you were trying to call it, it was busy, it's my fault. <laughs> yeah, I had the phone off the hook for 27 minutes. <laughs> Well, I, I, I would but, like to jump in and well, agree with Andy. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, there's a... Don't it, encourage him. In, 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 in one of his books, he has a, he has a character um, who's a, uh, a werewolf. Hmm. And the character is written uh, with such care and such craft that when that character dies, I cried. Wow. And, and it was a werewolf. You know, but uh, we really, we really appreciated him as a as a character, as a fictional character. Well, wow. before I saw he the is, movie in Pet Cemetery, I read the book, and the book kept me. I mean, I couldn't go to sleep. Hmm. I was and reading that, and, you know, just just shaking. And I think what I liked on, on this movie was that there's a real good mix of psychological terror. Yeah. And. Like this, there's some blood in this one too, so there's a little bit of gore in it also. So there's the, the combination of the two of them that really, really came together well to make this a uh, uh, make this a, a great horror film. Again, this is rated R, so it's a, a an adult only. Yes, yeah. yeah. And uh, Craig, can we properly say that this is a uh, a remake rather than a sequel? Yeah, it's a remake. Okay, so yeah, yeah. just using this newer is the, technology this is, this now. Is, yeah, this is the old story. Right. Um, you yeah, know, and they're actually you know they did it uh, last year. Years ago now. Yeah, I'm trying to remember uh, of, of all the books that Stephen King wrote. Um, I, you know, unlike most books that are turned into movies, I don't remember too many people saying, "Oh, the book was much better." Um, when it comes to Stephen King movies, or at least you know, maybe. Well, in some cases. Really? Yeah. yeah. I mean, Carrie, for example. You I loved. The book was better? I loved the book, and and the movie was very effective. Sure. But the book was really. And again, at Wordsmith, like Andy said, and I'm a reader, um, I did like reading the, the books before the movies. Mm -hmm. One of the ones that I read that I loved, and they made it into that uh, uh, several part series, was The Stand with Gary Sinise. And that was on originally on TV. It was a really, really good book and good movie. All right, now we have to take a quick break, and uh, when we come back, we're going to find out what else is playing at Sawmill Theaters. Also have some interesting questions we'd like you to chime in on. We'll get to all of that right after all of that.
The stand's a tough one. That, that was such a... So, do any of you have any other uh, ideas on question to ask our listening audience this morning? Oh. Were we going to do the sci-fi or...? Well, I mean, we could. I mean, uh, he was mentioning that, you know, we could talk about uh, sci-fi that's not horror-related, like Alien. You know, and I, you know, a couple of different things came to my mind quickly, but I don't know if anyone else had any other ideas of... <coughs> sure, that's fine. Uh, yeah, the recent uh, was it passage? passengers. Chris Pratt and Jennifer and more. Lawrence. They can even pick up and drop off your laptop and leave location yeah. or assist your remote. Oh, no, that, that was just a... That ship had a yeah. on his face. And Boy, that was just a terrific movie. Well, and Aliens, he goes on his ad and the link to his website on our website, KMOG yeah. Country. It's also com. scary, though. Scary mm. work. <laughs> aliens, the, the difference is plausible, not or versus not possible. Aliens was plausible. Yes. Aliens yeah. was, was yes. right yeah, on that's a good great. Distinction. Yeah. And so was the thing. Yes. Yeah. Original oh, thing. Original, yeah. With uh, Kurt like Russell. Right. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, no, no, not Kurt Russell. I didn't like that one at all. Oh, I like the first one. Two seconds. That's your heard name. Welcome back to our country. It was a very unruly group of men. movie critics today. And some of them are here in the studio. 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 Desi Arnaz did not star in the thing. Who was that? I was thinking Desi Arnaz. James Arnaz. Who was the sheriff from... He played a sheriff too in a western. James Arnaz. James Arnaz. James Arnaz. Sort of the same phonics. All right, so if we're we're going to do the little trivia thing here. On the intro to the TV show, who, what woman was referred to as a woman of backbone and bite? It was in the You're looking at me, I'm the woman, but I don't know. Well, I figured you had a lot of fight. Uh, um, <laughs> gotta be Miss Kitty. Uh, nope. 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 No. It's from the Big Valley. Oh. oh. Bar oh. Barbara Stanwyck. That's yeah. right. That's right. Okay, little All right. trip down TV trivia lane there. Yeah. Um, now, but we're going to finish off real quick here with what else is playing at the uh, Sawmill Theaters. Now, Dumbo and I mean that uh, with the utmost respect, uh, has been playing for, what, the, the last uh, week or two weeks? We came out last week, yeah. Last week. And it's about a young elephant whose oversized ears enabled him to fly and uh, help save a struggling circus, but then Dumbo and his friends discover dark secrets beneath its shiny veneer. Now, it's rated PG, so it's good for the kids. It plays at 1, 4, and 7, uh, and all of those shows are in 2D. But um, I've seen the trailer to this. It looked like the special effects is pretty good. Uh, the critics haven't necessarily been super kind on this one. Yeah, kind, of, kind of down the middle on that. Yeah. You, know. you know, critics tend to be kind of grumpy a lot. Yeah, well, we're the critics. Yeah. And Andy Case and in I point. Saw, Andy and I saw it, <laughs> and I, I, it was really charming. I mean, it was it was entertaining. Yeah, I thought it was okay. Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't think it was grand or right. you know terrific or anything. I didn't think it. I didn't have as much fun with that uh, as I had with. Uh, uh, you know, like the Lego movie, for instance, uh, a lot more fun, but uh, okay. uh, it was okay. You yeah. Know? Yeah. I've never been too impressed with Legos. I mean, I stepped on oh, one, stepped on one in the middle of the night once. I've had a bad, you know, attitude about well, them ever since. You don't go to the movies, so that's <laughs> true. Um, I do <laughs> once in a while. Hey, now another movie that's playing is uh, the movie called Us. A family's serenity turns to chaos when a group of doppelgangers begin to terrorize them. This one's rated R. Plays at 115, 415, and 715. And Craig, how's this one been doing at the theater here so far? No, oh, just terrible. Really? No. Oh, you in a word? Awful. Awful. Really? <laughs> awful and terrible. Uh, so no. disastrous. <laughs> <laughs> Sucking. <laughs> no one wants to come? It, it, it's just a really strange movie. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there's kind of a lot of kind of hidden meaning to it and it, it just wanted me you know, I watched it and I had to go Google it on what what I just watched and I, mean, I, I don't mind thinking about a movie for sure but it, I don't know it, it just seemed a little bit well, too, too strange for me. Now uh, Andy have you seen Us yet? No I, I have not but uh, even though it's not doing well uh, here in Rim Country 
uh, across the fruited plains. It's uh, really racking in the money. Really? Yeah. Wow. Uh, they only spent uh, 20 million bucks to make it, which, you know, as we've said, uh, you know, in movie business, that's that's not a great deal of money. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's brought in 183 million bucks. Wow, there's good so, ROI. Yeah. Uh, horror movies uh, can be filmed uh, with, you know, without a lot of uh, a lot of money, especially if you're not using uh, special 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 effects. Easy for you to see. You can if a, a good director can get a lot of like eerie stuff uh, just by throwing a shadow across a window, mm -hmm. uh, and you know that really doesn't cost very much, <laughs> and uh, you scare the scare the living daylights out of you. And people like that. Uh, the, maybe not around here, uh, but uh, boy, across the across the country, it's uh, it's really raking in the money. Outstanding. Now, uh, uh, Tina, I got I don't know that I don't remember you, if you shared your opinion before, but now one of the other movies still playing is Captain Marvel, uh, who is now a female this time around. And uh, um, have you seen this one? I have not. You have not seen it. This, no. Is this not your kind of movie? I, I, I've been avoiding it. Really? Yeah. I don't know why. I mean, I know it's doing well, and I know, and you saw it, Andy, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I'm kind of old school. I like them to keep Captain Marvel as a guy, but that's yeah, yeah. just me. Since 2019, everything's I different know. now. I know. <laughs> it, it, uh, this has been doing great, though, nationally. It, it, well, it just passed a billion dollars worldwide. Right. A billion, uh, yeah, a billion. Yeah. And that's, there hasn't been that many movies that can say that. No, no, not not at all. And, and this one actually is leading directly into uh, uh, Avengers Endgame. And that's coming that's out here another month or so? Three weeks. Oh, three weeks? Well, oh, three comes. weeks. Uh, this one, uh, uh, yeah, that this uh, Avengers Endgame is going to be, there's some big movies coming up this year, but it, it'll clearly be one of the top three biggest films of the year. Wow. Uh, broke the single day ticket sales for, for Dan's ticketing. Right. Broke the record in six hours. Six hours. Uh, AMC wow. theaters, uh, the Alamo Draft House theaters, all their websites crashed. Uh, wow. They're, they're starting, some of these tickets are starting to pop up on eBay now. Um, huh. I just read the other day a pair of tickets in New Jersey were sold for fifteen thousand dollars. What? Just goes um, to show there's some people out there with more money yeah, than sense. Yeah, but but this is really a, uh, this thing is, is really going to be hyped up. Um, wow. This is going to be a huge huge film. We we are doing two advanced screenings ourselves. Uh, we don't do advanced tickets. Oh, so, yeah. uh, you know that Thursday morning right. we'll start selling tickets for that. Right. Um, and and Andy, what did you find the captain to be marvelous? Uh, yeah, I thought it was a I thought it was a great movie, and of course this is a, as Craig has pointed out, this is a must see. I, I mean, you have to go see Captain Marvel. It doesn't matter what you think about it. it doesn't matter what you think about having Captain Marvel turn into a girl. It just doesn't matter. This is this is part part of the uh, the Avengers universe, hmm. and uh, you have to see it. And now everything, uh, because of the merging of uh, these uh, uh, gigantic uh, movie studios. Everything now is part of the Avengers new, uh, universe. Well, you know, this thing's already uh, surpassed a billion dollars. Do we have, do we have any numbers on what they uh, uh, spent to make that? Sure. You want to share it with us? <laughs> <laughs> That's well, a two-part question. Why not? Would you like to do it this morning? Or? <laughs> oh yeah, I think a uh, uh, hundred hundred and seventy million. I think. Hundred and seventy. Wow. Yeah. So, so they, they, I, I know these. The, uh, one of the reasons that uh, people like me like these movies so much is, is they are just absolutely spectacular. Hmm. And, so and special effects, uh, the stuff that was really eye-popping for you, or what? Yeah, uh, and, and they always are. You know, right. That's that's part of the deal. Uh, and the same goes with the uh, like the Star Wars films. You know, the, the great special of effects. Course. Yeah, and, and, we, and we like that. And the wonderful thing about the uh, the Marvel universe, and the Marvel universe um, has has now been merged with the DC universe, hmm. uh, the old uh, Detective Comics, that's what the DC I never from. knew that. Wow. Yeah, Detective Comics back in the 30s. Hmm. Um, and it, it, it's so strange because we have Sh Shazam coming up today, mm -hmm. and uh, Shazam is a, a, a magic word that turns uh, this kid, Billy, uh, into... Ooh. Shazam? No, Shazam's a wizard. Oh, okay turns him into Captain Marvel. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah. So we have two Captain Marvel movies going on simultaneously in the theaters. So, yeah, this, yeah, there, boy, that brings up a bunch of questions. Yeah, no, there's, there's, 
this whole Captain Marvel thing and, and Captain Marvel going from from being a man to a woman and, and it's all kind of a, a complex storyline, but it goes way back. Brought to you by your local plumbing company. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah the, the, the first Captain Marvel uh, movies uh, came out in uh, 1941 in uh, well, you're probably not old enough to remember this, uh, Randy, but uh, in, the, in the olden days, uh, we had uh, little short 20-minute uh, uh, movies that went before the movies for the Saturday matinees. Right, right. And that's, that was the original Captain Marvel uh, was a, a, a series on the, the, uh, you know, the, the matinee shorts. Oh, wow, I didn't yeah, know that. Like the, well, there was a lot of them. There was you know, the, uh, the Green Hornet and... Uh, there are just tons of those things. You know, real quick before we talk about the last movie that's playing uh, at the Sawmill Theaters this week, that brings to mind, um, you know, I, I remember as a kid, um, you know, as far as going and spending the afternoon at the theater, they'd have a double feature where you'd see two movies and maybe have some cartoons in the middle. Um, where did that go? Is anyone doing that kind of thing anymore? I mean, is there... Um, it's just, just it, it's not yeah. probably uh, generating enough revenue. Have, or? I don't know if people have the attention span now. Uh, Everything's so interesting. You know, internet driven and, and cell phones and uh, people got other things to be doing. I can't so sit can. in a room for four hours. Well, well, well you, you know, there's, there's, you know, we're we're just bombarded with such a, a sensory overload now that mm -hmm. yeah, there's so many things going on at one time that to be in one spot for. For four hours is a little bit much, and, and you're in the theater all the time. But you still have problems with uh, uh, everybody's, you know, phone ringing in the middle of the movie and stuff like that. You, you know, it, it, it happens for for sure. You know, it, it's something we really try to keep an eye on, and you know, we, we run a lot of advertising on that to try to keep people to stop doing that. Um, it, it, it still has happened. It, it's kind of a some yeah. people just don't understand that, that bothers other people when they're watching a movie. Yeah. Hey, well, to round things out, you know, another great movie that you can take your kids to see is How to Train Your Dragon, The Hidden World. And uh, now this is, what, uh, third or fourth week on this one now? Fifth. Fifth week, wow. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, as this is probably, uh, I'm guessing, because I know the first one seemed to be pretty popular, I'm guessing this one was too. Ha half a billion bucks here for uh, wow. this dragon movie. And, uh, you know, I thought it was kind of fun. It's PG rated, I mean, it's like aimed at seven-year-olds or something, uh, uh, so it's pretty, it's pretty bland uh, for my taste. I, I, like the, I like the quips and the jokes. And so, and no zombies in spandex or anything? No, none of that. And, and uh, like the, the uh, they're not deplorables, what are those little critters, the little yellow guys? Oh, Despicable Me? Yeah, Despicable Me. Uh, the Minions. Yeah, the Minions. <laughs> yes. The Despicable Me movies uh, have the little Minions in it. And there's all kinds of, of clever stuff uh, for the adults. And in this one, uh, nah, there's not. It's like, it's like getting uh, uh, gravy with, uh, with uh, no sausage in it and soaking it up with a piece of Wonder Bread. I have to say, those little Minion characters, uh, I've gotten some good belly laughs out of I mean, there's a lot of little uh, double entendre <laughs> stuff that goes on that's kind of funny. Not in the Dragon movie. All right, well, this How to Train Your Dragon, The Hidden World, plays at 1, 4, and 7. And again, it is rated at PG. Of course, you can always find out what's playing and when it's playing by logging on to Sawmill Theaters. It's about 10 o'clock, 57 degrees, and uh, we're talking with your hometown movie guys this morning on Rim Country Forum. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, Tina, Andy, and Craig with us in the studios, and we're also taking calls from you at 474-2427, and lo and behold, we have somebody on the phone. Hi, you're on Rim Country Forum. Good morning. Well, hello there, Al. How you doing? What? Oh, come on. That's, no, that's it's, not it's, possible. It's always nice to have goals, but... <laughs> oh, yesterday, I had to go to the dentist, so it's been, you know, two weeks of squinting and blinking, and on top of that, yesterday was winking and squinting and drooling. So, oh, yeah. You can, you can have it, honey. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And our apologies to those of you who are eating your breakfast right now. Really? Mm. <laughs> right? Oh, cold pursuit? Yeah. Yes. Yes, really. One of those pursuits. You guys were trying to, you know, think of what kind of gangster names you would have. So between my we working were? and drooling, <laughs> I got to thinking. And so uh, we would have Randy the Rogue. <laughs> Ooh, 
Ooh, I like that. I was really kind of hoping for, like, Randy Callahan. I mean, can you imagine that? Well, punk? Can you? Well, you can still say that. All right. Roving around this country. All right, well, that's one. Now, yeah, you, yeah, who else are you going to pick up, Craig? Craig, Ooh. Ooh. He knows lots of facts. He also might know lots of facts about you. And, 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 and what and you do in that back row at the theater. And the word piggyback, it backs on crypt. Hmm. No, 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 no. No, I'm Tina the Terrible. Tina the Terrible. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, I tell you what, if, if you talk to the people that go to her yoga class, I mean, she, you know, she's a combination yoga teacher and English teacher, so, you know, they've given up the downward dog. Now they've got uh, a new uh, uh, move in their yoga class called Automatopoeia, and you don't even want to know what that is. <laughs> Automatopoeia asana. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's too true. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
and there's been others that have been more. But uh, so, if I'm asking you, Tina, your favorite sci-fi movie that uh, was non-horror focused? Um, it would have to be, I think, They Live by John Car John Carpenter. That's a non-horror sci-fi movie <clears throat> with a message. Wow, that's one. Yeah, that, and I, should black have and white I should have expected it's something that I'd never heard of before. <laughs> well, you know, John Carpenter, I am a big fan of John Carpenter, mm -hmm. and he does, um, you know, his own music for a lot of his movies. I'm, I'm real partial to The Thing with Kurt Russell. Um, but, but They Live is a movie with a message in which, uh, you know, the sort of down and out construction guy, played by Roddy Piper, who was a wrestler, mm -hmm. finds this box of sunglasses and he puts on the sunglasses and all of a sudden he's able to see the subliminal messages on the billboards, uh, you know, buy, consume, mm. uh, obey, and, uh, it, you know, how he deals with Sounds these kind of aliens. Sounds Orwellian. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Very interesting. Yeah, and I mean, uh, speaking of Orwellian, uh, 1984. Yeah. And, and you know, I remember I had to, you know, we had to uh, read the book and watch the movie back in high school and write mm -hmm. reports on it and everything. And I remember that movie, you know, just being seeming kind of outlandish to me. Uh, and nowadays, you know, you, when you think of the internet, uh, uh, my gosh, it's it actually happened. You yeah. know, we all are kind of yeah. mesmerized by these screens that we stare at. Yep. Yeah. So much so that we carry them with us now. Yes. What about you, uh, Craig? When it comes to uh, a non, uh, uh, oh yeah, um, a non. Uh, uh, matter of fact, our our cameraman here just uh, said, "What about War of the Worlds?" Oh um, yeah. Now that was now that one. I remember as a kid. It's a remake. Freaked me yeah. out, and and, right. the, and the remake. Well, and there was, was the radio show. Yeah. And Orson Welles did the radio show. And it was so convincing that people yeah. were actually committing suicide because yep. they thought it was real news being yep. broadcast when. Uh, and that's that's a scary bunch of, of history. The original one was good. Yeah, the, yeah. yeah the original the remake one was, with Tom was Cruise was pathetic. And, and, uh, Craig, what about you? When it comes to non-horror type <coughs> sci-fi movies, well, you know, two thousand one was well, yes. space yes. odyssey classic. Uh, just, just a few years ago, we had the arrival mm -hmm. that was uh, mm -hmm. uh, these aliens came down and they had a, a different way of communicating. They, they, they communicated kind of visually, and it, it was. I was touching on how we think and mm -hmm. uh, that the, the way we communicate actually affects how we think and it, it opened up a whole new d dimension to, to humankind. So kind of mm -hmm. I think for me, oh man, I'll tell you what, there's, there's two really, really significant ones that I'm surprised no one has mentioned that I think really fit this scenario of a, a non- uh, horror type of sci-fi movie, and what are those? Well, I'll tell you, 57 Degrees, this morning on Rim Country Forum, wrapping things up here with our hometown movie guys, Tina, Andy, and Craig, and I don't know where Andy went, Andy got enough of us apparently. He's, uh, you know, the Star Valley Vice, he's got to go off and do uh, mayor, mayor stuff. Okay, well, I don't know how that goes. Well, so we were asking, you know, what's your favorite sci-fi movie that isn't a horror-based sci-fi? And of course, uh, one of my two favorites would have to be Star Wars. And, and I, as far as picking an episode, mm -hmm. I'm, I think you know the first one just you know knocked my socks off. The rest of them have all been great. And when you look back at the first one now, it doesn't have quite because we've gotten so spoiled by all the special effects nowadays. It doesn't have quite the allure that it did originally. But still, uh, I think Star Wars way up at the top of my list. But one that might edge that out just by you know a skinch, whatever big that is, is uh, Avatar. Avatar oh, just that's right. Avatar just uh, I, I I mean it it, it it takes you to a whole uh, another planet actually yes. but but does so in a very convincing way and as we talked here uh, a year or so ago um, one of the fascinating stories that came out of that was with Avatar uh, there was a lot of complaints that people were saying after watching it uh, they were suffering from depression because they had to come back to reality and they liked uh, they liked that uh, that planet whatever it was called in Avatar. Um, and that, which leads me to think of, come on, people, grow up. Uh, but, but still, it, it was a real escape into a whole different uh, world. And uh, I never thought I would uh, find 15-foot uh, blue women with tails uh, alluring. But it they was were, a pretty interesting movie. It's an amazing, and it's a James Cameron. <coughs> he's, he's quite the director. Yeah. Yeah, we're, uh, we're going back into those, I think, next year. Oh, really? The, the second one. Wow. Uh, so are they, going, are they just going back to Avatar again? or? Uh, yeah, it'll be a sequel. Mm -hmm. uh, and actually, I think they're doing three or four. Oh, wow. Um, and, and I think I understand that they're kind of filming them all together, so they're going to have all four of these in the next, starting 2020, we're going to have three or four 
you know, every year. Wow. Or one every year. Right. Right. You know, I, there, I just some, great. some other ones that come to mind. Mm -hmm. Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Ooh. The original in black and white with Kevin McCarthy. And then the remake with Donald Sutherland. Uh, the, they're scary, scary, scary. Right? Yeah. You know, I didn't even realize that that had been a remake. Uh, yes. I only knew about the Sutherland. Well, yeah. And then another one, uh, you know, like Ray Bradbury, we were talking about Fahrenheit 451. Oh, yeah. That's a sci fi oh, yeah. with a message. Definitely. Yeah. Interesting stuff. Hey, we've got another caller on the line, six minutes in front of 10 o'clock. Hi, you're on Rim Country Forum. Good morning. You know, I, I, that's a great one, Carol. Thanks. You know, yeah. I, I'm thinking that uh, uh, in the favorite scenes from E.T., I mean, that was an iconic movie that I think a lot of people saw. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, while the, the, the silhouetted scene of the boy riding his bicycle with E.T. in the basket on the front going across the moon was kind of cool, um, I don't think there was a point in the movie that cracked me up more than when E.T. is hiding in the closet filled with stuffed animals and just kind of sits there and look, <laughs> looks like another stuffed animal and gets away with it. But that was, that was another one of those movies that, uh, you know, kind of outlandish and, and uh, unusual in how they pulled it off. Uh, but, but they really did a great job. Like yeah. Spielberg, you know, E.T. and then uh, Close Encounters. Yeah. 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 And that yeah. was up by the, de was it Devil's... Uh, yeah. De uh, White Devil's Tower. Tower. Devil's Tower, yeah. 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 But what about... <clears throat> The Matrix. Oh, no, that was a great one. That is such a great movie. And, and that, now, the I, remakes kind of suck, yeah. but the, the original was really good. Yeah, that, that was one that I found really entertaining. I yeah. forgot about that. And not history. horror, but really no. sci fi. Men in Black. Men in Black. Men in Black, yeah. Yes, that's if we're one. talking about comic sci fi, now, definitely. And when it comes to comic sci fi, there's, there's, uh, there's not, not too many that are funnier than that. I mean, Will Smith did a great job yeah. in that. Which also, speaking of another sci-fi uh, that I really got a kick out of, and, and in some humorous ways, was Will Smith's uh, part in uh, Independence Day. Yeah. I mean, nothing like uh, yeah. uh, you know yeah. ripping open the cockpit of a of a uh, space vehicle and and punching an alien in the face. Um, well, uh, and and what was the one? Oh my gosh, I'm heavy brain fade, but. Um, in which the little green guys come to Earth and their heads explode, and Jack Nicholson. Oh, um, uh, 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 Invaders from Mars. Uh, no, Mar Mars, 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 Mars attacks. attacks. Mars attacks. Yes. 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 Oh, that, that now comic yeah. sci-fi. Uh, that was. Oh. And, and, uh, <laughs> Love that, you know. <laughs> and they, they, they're the characters that they put together in this little thing, you know, a little spooky looking, but when their when their heads blow up, that's kind of cool. Yeah, and, then, and there's that scene in which uh, Jack Nicholson is sitting with uh, Jim Brown. In, you know, and Jim Brown was kind of trying to clean up his act. He says, you know, I, 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 I became, you know, accepted a lot. I gave up pork, and I'm, you know, cleaning up my act. And Jack Nicholson, there's this moment of silence, and he looks at him like, you give up pork? <laughs> <laughs> the heck's wrong with you, buddy? Yeah, uh, you how about pork. critters? Yeah, the critter. Critter, oh, critters. Oh, critters. Yeah, the, that was the good. comedy sense, the little little guys rolling around. They're oh, about a foot tall, and they right, roll yeah. up into a ball, and, and yeah, they... It came from outer space. It, it came from outer space. And what about, uh, you know, speaking of, of little critters, uh, one movie that I have to say I'm, I was amazed that uh, it took off like it did uh, was Gremlins. Mm -hmm. That was, I mean, for mm -hmm. what looks like a whole bunch of cute little plush novels, oh, uh, you know, yeah. but, but that was an interesting uh, movie. Little Shop of Horrors. Oh, uh, yeah, cult movies, super. Yeah, Steve Martin. Yeah. 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 Well, and then, uh, of course, so Seymour. If, yeah. if we're yeah. uh, uh, Lord of the Rings. I mean, oh, yeah. You know, that, I mean, that's, really? that's a huge one. And, and that was, yeah. I, I've, I've, uh, I don't think any, any of the done, ones they've done so far, I've found uh, anything but uh, thoroughly entertaining. I mean, the, really the, uh, uh, the cinematography, the special mm -hmm. effects, and all that. Incredible. And what's that, uh, that one funky little guy that hangs out in the, in the cave? And, Gollum. And, yeah, Gollum. Gollum. Uh, Gollum. That, I, what an unusual mm -hmm. character, um, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, it, again, you kind of wonder where the the thoughts come from for some. Yeah, no, we've got a Tolkien movie coming up. Oh, really? It's actually on the, the life okay. of uh, uh, J.R. Tolkien. Yeah. Oh, wow! I was uh, I so that. I, I think that's his summer coming yeah. up. Um, it's just about his life. Yes. Uh, and a lot of people may not realize that oh. he was actually quite a theologian. He um, was. Oh, and, and, he was a theologian and a professor. He right. invented his own language. 
the you know the Middle Earth language. Yeah, definitely yeah. not not a uh, not a, a dumb he and, guy. He and C.S. Lewis hung out together yeah. at uh, Oxford, I believe it was. Right, right. Yeah. And, and that's I mean, see, it, it, to be buddies with C.S. Lewis, that's well, that, that's a whole other topic. And show. to be buddies with Tokyo. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, it's it, it, mutually gratifying. Yeah. Well, anyway, uh, again, all kinds of good things uh, playing at the Sawmill Theater. Uh, don't forget North by Northwest, the classic movie Saturday, taking place tomorrow morning. That's at 10 o'clock. You can get in for just five bucks and and uh, see Cary Grant and uh, uh, doing some of Alfred Hitchcock's most well-known stuff. Also, Sh Shazam is playing, Pet Cemetery, Dumbo, Us, Yay. Captain Marvel, and How to Train Your Dragon: The Hidden World. Uh, and what uh, what do we have coming up next week? Well, next week, uh, there's a uh, uh, Missing Link, another kids movie coming up, oh. but uh, that's where we're hoping for the Mustang, uh, the, the, where their uh, prison release program, where they're using horses to uh, oh, for right. rehabilitation yeah. and stuff. Uh, we still have not got word on that. Uh, kind of hard to get a hold of the studios this week. They're doing a CinemaCon in Las Vegas this right. week. It's a big convention thing. But well, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll hopefully find out for that either today or Monday for sure if we're getting that. More information on that. And of course, you can always find out what's playing and when it's playing by going online to sawmilltheaters.com. Thanks for tuning in and listening this morning to Rim Country Forum. It's been brought to you by Banner Payson Medical Center, Holiday Cruises and Tours, Little Stinker Septic Service, George Henry Plumbing, Heating and Cooling, Suites by Kim Ross, and ITD Group Computer Services. You are listening to Rim Country Radio, KMOG Payson, 97.5.